Hello there everybody, Mark Balford here from Hit Training. I hope you are well and you're all keeping safe. As part of our life hacks videos that we've been putting up, um, just showing how you can utilize simple and cheap ingredients and turning them into something beautiful, or just elongating them, stretching them out a little bit just to save yourself an unnecessary trip. As per government guidelines, we want you all to keep healthy, safe, but obviously with a bit of lovely food in your belly, you can keep nice and happy as well. So today we're going to be doing sausage, tomato and fennel pinwheels. Now this is something that me and Zane probably have once a week, don't we mate? Probably twice a week, either as a breakfast, which is a really good little takeaway portable breakfast, or just as a little snack in the evenings. Uh, Zane gets them in his lunchbox sometimes as well. It is a really good way to stretch six little sausages or a small pack of sausage meat and a sheet of puff pastry. Now again, with any of my recipes, I'm a big fan of raiding the cupboards and just checking out what's there and just trying to put them together. So today I have got one sheet of ready-made puff pastry. If you're feeling like you've got a bit of time on your hands, you've got some butter and flour, then by all means make some puff pastry. But I've got a sheet of ready-made convenience puff pastry. It's a wonderful product and I really think it's just a wonderful staple to have in your fridge. We've got six sausages or you could use a 300 and 50 gram pack of sausage meat for this recipe. And for the sausages, I've just skinned them, okay? I've got two tablespoons of tomato puree. I have got 50 grams of grated cheese. Now, whatever cheese you want, I would just recommend using a hard cheese, okay? We've got one egg beaten to glaze. Um, we've got some linseeds there that we had, and we just like to sprinkle those on the top, and it just gives it a lovely crunch. Um, and we've got a few fennel seeds that we just like to sprinkle on the top as well because we like pork and we like fennel and they're really good friends. Okay, so Zane's first job, we've got the puff pastry out of the fridge. We've got it out of his pack. Zane's just going to dock it. By docking it, we mean just pricking it gently with a fork in four lines. Okay, and that way the pastry won't rise and therefore we're going to keep it quite compact it's not going to be overly it will be light and flaky it is puff pastry but we don't want it to be too over a rise okay so out of this i'll get between 10 and 12 generous pinwheels so it's a really really economical way to stretch this out and like i say once a tray of these have been done even do them the night before leave them in the fridge you can get them in the oven in the morning and it's a hot nice portable breakfast for everybody okay so the next, zane's next job is just to paint it with a little bit of tomato puree, okay? So if you just dop it on Zane, and then we're just gonna paint it. Again, this is rough and ready cooking. Obviously get the kids involved. That's it Zane, if you can scrape that all out, and then Zane's just gonna use the back of his spoon just to spread it around a little. Well, like I say, you can use whatever flavors you want, okay? That's it Zane, if you use the back of the spoon now just to spread it around a little bit, that'd be wonderful. Good boy. As you can see today, I'm again working on a colour-coded chopping board just because I have them here. I'm very lucky to have them. Um, I'm using red today. I know I'm using pastry, but I am using raw sausage meat. There will be that risk of contamination as I'm just cutting through the sausage meat will tend to inevitably just come out a little bit on the blade of the knife. So I'm using a red chopping board today. But as long as you're using a clean, sanitised and secured down chopping board, it's amazing how many times I do see chopping boards aren't secured down. And they wiggle around a bit, just a little bit of wet kitchen towel, a clean tea towel underneath will prevent that from happening. Right, Zane, beautiful. If you don't turn out to be a chef, you'll definitely turn out to be a decorator. That is fantastic. Now, the next bit is the sausages. Now, again, I've just broken them down. I've put them in a bowl. Again, supervise the children doing this because we want them to make sure that their hands are clean before they start. They're using raw meat. And also we wash them thoroughly afterwards. Okay, so... Zane's going to be using a dough scraper. Now, dough scrapers are great. You can pick them up from time to time, eBay for like 99p. If you're struggling for a dough scraper, take away lid, just cut it in half. Just make sure the edges aren't sharp. And I've just cut straight through this and done nothing to it and it's absolutely fine. And I can use that to spread the sausage meat. Okay, so Zane's going to use the dough scraper and I'm going to use a takeaway tub just to prove I can do it. So put your sausage meat into the middle of your pastry and you've just got to start to spread. Now we don't go all the way to the edges on this. What we do is we leave a lip of about an inch, okay? And that way 
we can roll this up quite nicely and neatly. It's never going to be perfectly even as well, so don't beat yourself up on that. It's a bit like a roulette when you get the pinwheel. Have you got the one with a bit more sausage meat on? But I think that's part of the fun as well. Good job. Right, we're just going to put these scrapers to the washing up and we're going to wash our hands as well. So we'll be back in 30 seconds. And now we're back. Government guidelines washing our hands for at least 20 seconds, nice and thoroughly hot soapy water and dried them off well as well. Okay, so we're now going to get on to the next stage. So the sausage meat has been spread out, as you can recall. And we're going to just sprinkle a little bit of cheese on the top. So again, I've got a little bit of Grano Padano, just I've literally the rough, crusty end of it, and I've grated that down. You can use cheddar, you can use whatever. Zane, would you like to sprinkle the cheese all over, please? So there I've got about 30 grams, a large heap, tablespoon perhaps. So like I say, you can take a very small amount of an ingredient and you can take it a long way with this. Also acts as a seasoning. Okay, so again, I'm not the salt police. I use salt in cooking, I am a chef. But this way we enhance the flavor by not using salt. Okay, now we're gonna roll it, okay? So what we're gonna do, I'm just gonna start Zane off. And we just roll an edge. And we peel our pastry off of the paper. It's almost like a little bonus treat you get with the uh, pre-prepared pastries. That's very hard to say, wasn't it? Um, you get a little bit of baking paper as well. So we're just gonna tidy that into a sausage shape and we're just gonna roll. Zane's gonna continue that. If you just do that with your hands, my friend, and we can just start to roll it all the way to the edge. And again, give the kids a little bit of a hand. I'm just going to hold the paper from the back and that's allowing Zane just to get that sausage shape. Well done. All the way to the end. Wonderbar. Well done. Look at that. How beautiful is that? I like to say, save that paper. It's really, really good. Just make sure that you don't use it for another day and you're going to put something on it that isn't necessarily meat based. Use it on the day and use it for these only. Do not keep it, do not put it into your cupboard. Uh, you could potentially make someone very poorly through cross-contamination. Okay, so now we have a bit of a gargantuan roll going on. So just to make this easier for ourselves, we're just going to halve it, okay? So we're going to now cut our pinwheels, get them onto a lined tray with a little bit of baking parchment and we're gonna get those finished and into the oven. So a whole log, you could get about 12 portions. We've cut the log down. We've got six here. It's only us here today. So what I've done is I've cling, cling wrapped and I've put the other one in the bottom of the fridge and we're gonna use that up for tomorrow for breakfast. So breakfast is ready made, we're prepped. Um, we've got a nice hot lunch treat for us today. So Zane's gonna cut this log into six. Wonderful portions. Thank you, sir. All right, so I'll get rid of the knife. We don't need that anymore. And these will go onto the tray. So Zane, I'll put these onto the tray. Yeah. And you can do the squidging down. So we're gonna get six on a tray. Now in this state, they are quite thick. So just by pushing them down ever so slightly, we can ensure that they'll cook through without burning and without ruining. Okay, let me get rid of your board and your tray, sir. Okay, so Zane's going to give them a tiny little push down. And what I do is I flip them over and they've got a lovely straight edge. Pedantic about things, I like flat edges and flat surfaces. So Zane's now going to egg wash the top. If you don't have an egg, um, what I suggest you do is just get a little drop of milk that will act as a perfect glaze as well. It's just for A, just a little bit of finish. You don't have to do it at all, to be perfectly honest. But also if you're sprinkling anything on the top, it does help it adhere to the top of the pinwheel as well. If not though, I'm sure things will stick to it perfectly fine. Okay, so Zane's now gonna sprinkle the fennel seeds on the top. And we only want a few of them. And again, you don't have to put them on at all. You could put on any other form of seed that you like. Wonderful. There we go, Zane. 
And if you can do the, we've got linseeds, little brown linseeds. Um, we just chuck them in cereal and stuff. They're really good in granola bars as well. If you've got sesame seeds, then great. If you've got nuts or you're allergic, then obviously please avoid. Wonderful stuff. We're just gonna wash our hands now, 30 seconds as per government guideline. So those are the pinwheels ready to go. We're gonna put these in the oven for around 12 to 15 minutes to bake at 200 degrees, gas mark six. Um, what I suggest you do is give them a good five minutes to cool down afterwards because these things really do retain their heat and we don't want anybody getting burnt, okay? So we'll see you back in a bit when these are baked. Thank you. So 12 to 15 minutes later, our pinwheels are out of the oven. They look absolutely delicious. Golden, brown, beautiful pinwheels stretching one sheet of puff pastry, six tiny little sausages and a few odds and ends from the cupboard into a wonderful treat. Perfect portable food. Sun shining here in Gloucestershire today. So me and Zane are going to sit out on the lawn and we're going to join our fresco little lunch. <laughs> 